Hey everyone, today we are in Marvelous Designer. We're going to design this utility belt from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. In part one, we will design the base of the belt, and in part two, we will finish up by designing the pouches. In the description below, there's a free Marvelous Designer project file and all the 3D assets seen here. I will also include a link to the reference images. For the final render, I added more detail and textured and painted. If you would like the project files for both Blender and Substance Painter, you can check those out in the description below as well. Okay, let's jump in. Let's start by going up to the 2D toolbar and select the rectangle pattern shape. Left click, and we'll input 90 for the width, and for the height, we'll input six. With the transform pattern tool, let's move the rectangle pattern piece closer to the center of the avatar's body. In this menu up here, we'll toggle on the arrangement points so that we can easily wrap the pattern piece around the waist. Select one of the blue points, and once it's arranged, let's go ahead and hide the arrangement points. To avoid any collision issues, let's change the layer to one. We'll grab the segment sewing tool and connect the two ends of the pattern piece. Let's simulate. And then we'll go ahead and hide the avatar in the pants. To see the detail a little better, we can lower the particle distance to 15 or 10. Now lowering the particle distance can slow down your simulation, so go with what works best for you. Let's add some internal lines to create the trim. We'll grab the edit pattern tool, left click and select both pattern outlines. Right click and we'll select offset as internal line. Let's change the distance to one. Now we're going to add a fabric. In the library tab, let's find the knit fleece terry fabric and assign it to our pattern piece. Select the 2D window and let's switch to the one window layout. So looking at our reference image here, we're going to use internal lines to create the ridges on our belt. And as we can see, we've already added internal lines for the trim. All right, let's right click the pattern outline, select offset as internal line, input one for the distance and change the number of offsets to two. While the internal lines are still highlighted, right click, select extend trim to internal line. Now we will copy and paste the rest of the internal lines. Select both internal lines, right click, select copy, and then we'll right click inside the pattern piece. Select paste, and what we want to do is right click and we'll have the option to set the number of distance between each of the internal lines. Set the interval to 1.5 and the number of shapes to 59. Let's return to the two window layout and we will see that we've created our internal lines for the belt. Delete this extra internal line and we'll add another one to the other side. We need to separate this into individual pattern pieces. If we try to cut and sew these internal lines first, Marvelous will ask us if we want to extend the endpoints to the pattern outline, but we don't want to do that because that will cut our trim as well. We'll select no, and now it is telling us that in order for the cut and sew function to work, it needs to intersect the pattern outline. All we would need to do is cut and sew the top and bottom internal lines first, and then we can cut the vertical internal lines because now they would be intersecting the pattern boundaries. And here we have our separate pattern pieces. This next part will be a bit tedious, but we'll want to select every other pattern piece and move them above. Now let's merge the two pattern pieces at each end. 
With the Edit Pattern tool, left click on the pattern outline, hold down Shift while selecting the other pattern outline, and with both selected, right click and hit Merge. All right, let's take a look at the belt. So right now we can't see the ridges of the belt because all the pattern pieces are the same thickness. What we want to do is use the Layer Clone tool to create a bit of variation in the thickness. Let's move the top trim to create more space. Select the top pattern pieces, right click, and select Layer Clone Over. This will add a duplicate pattern piece on top and automatically align all of our sewing lines. And now we can see how that extra pattern piece creates the effect that we are looking for. To add even more separation in the thickness between the pattern pieces, we can apply additional thickness to the rear of the other pattern pieces. Let's select them, open the property editor, and underneath geometry, change the extrusion direction to backward. This will extrude and express thickness to the back side of the pattern pieces. Let's take a look. You can continue to tweak the thickness using these methods. I think this looks okay for now, so let's keep going. We're gonna add a little more detail to the trim. Add an internal line, and we'll input the distance to 0.2, and we'll cut and sew. Select the new pattern piece and send it backward. Let's duplicate the base fabric and assign it to the trim pattern piece. In the property editor, scroll down to the bottom and change the thickness of the fabric to 3. We can see that in addition to the thickness, we've also added some curvature and roundness to the trim. I like the roundness on the top, but let's go ahead and reduce it a bit on the bottom. In the property editor, scroll down to geometry and lower the curvature to around 40. Now we see that the bottom edge is sharper. Let's repeat this process for the bottom trim. In the next few steps, we'll add loops to the belt. Use the Layer Clone tool to duplicate this pattern piece. We'll remove linked editing and we'll also remove all sewing lines. With the Transform Pattern tool, double click the pivot point. We'll click and as we are dragging, right click to bring up the Transform menu. Change the width to 3. Next, we are going to add two internal lines so that we can sew our pattern piece to the belt. We want to make sure that the distance between the internal lines is less than the width of the loop pattern piece. We'll use the segment sewing tool to connect these pieces.
Let's simulate and see how this looks. I want the loop to look more firm, so let's go ahead and create a new fabric for this pattern piece. This time we will keep the same thickness, but we'll change the physical property to trim hardware. And then let's also lower the particle distance. That is looking better. Let's repeat this process on the other side. We'll copy and mirror paste the pattern piece. For the loops in the back, we will repeat the same process with only a couple adjustments. Duplicate the pattern piece, remove the linked editing and all sewing lines. We're gonna extend the length to 12. And then we'll also reduce the height to two. Well. Let's add three internal lines with a distance of three. Now we'll add our internal lines for sewing. This time we want to use the free sewing tool so that we can control the start and end points of our sewing line. Establish the start and end on the loop internal lines and then we'll do the same on the belt internal lines. Let's repeat this process for the remaining internal lines. Let's change the particle distance to five and simulate. Mm -hmm. 
The last detail we'll add for today is the front belt loop. This will be a similar process as the previous loops. We'll duplicate the pattern piece, remove the linked editing, and all sewing lines. Now, let's extend this pattern piece by offsetting the pattern outline. Change the distance to 3, and check the Create Internal Line box. Before simulating, let's remove this sewing line and pull it away from the belt. And then we'll sew this internal line to the belt. Let's go ahead and round the corners. Grab this Move Curve tool, left click, and as you drag inward, right click. Link both of the lines in input point 5. And we'll repeat the same process for this corner. We'll create the trim by offsetting the pattern outline. And changing the distance to 0.4. And then we'll cut and sew the internal line. Let's assign this trim to a new fabric. Duplicate the main fabric and change the physical property to trim hardware and the thickness to 3. Let's lower the particle distance to 5 and simulate. This is the end of part 1. In part 2, we will focus on designing the pouches. Please feel free to leave comments and questions. I would love to hear your feedback, especially if there's anything that we can do to improve these videos. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.